Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to follow up uh, the past video we did on taking a look inside here and also talking about, uh, you know, Angus's issue of being shocked by a 3D printer. So, uh, many thanks to a lot of the viewers out there. There are a lot of discussion on this and, and kind of coming to uh, maybe some sort of rough conclusions as to what could have caused this. So I wanted to do a follow up video on this. So, number one, don't do this at home. This is very dangerous. I know what I'm doing. So I've worked with power before. Uh, so just don't do it. I'm doing it to kind of share to help explain what can happen, uh, especially if you have a bad or faulty ground uh, with your tools. So what I'm going to do here is I have the uh, JG Aurora set up uh, basically just because I have it open. You can do this with um, roughly any power supply configuration so I'm going to use this for demonstration purposes now what I've done is I have a temporary extension cord which I don't like set up here but I'm going to use this for demonstration purposes so I've got my ground fault tester over here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plug this in because I want to demonstrate this so when I plug this in notice I have two orange lights so two orange lights means my setup is correct so, with my setup being correct, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this again. Whoop! Sorry for bumping you guys, it gets stuck in there. Now I'm going to use one of these nasty little things. So what are these nasty little things which I don't recommend? These remove your ground. So it, may, it gives you a little ground tab here. And in the olden days, the idea was, is you were supposed to attach this, I think, to the screw of your electrical outlet. Now it's supposed to be grounded, but it was just a jury-rigged way of attaching um, a three-prong plug to a two-prong plug, which is bad, bad, bad. Uh, you can see it's rather old. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this back in. You notice I only have one light. So one light means I have an open ground. So my ground is now floating. I'm not connected to anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this. And then what I'm going to do is reach across and I'm going to plug the printer in. This is dangerous. Do not do this. This is for demonstration purposes only. It's not even educational. So now I need to find some place to stick this. I'm going to kind of put this on the tripod. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to energize this. Now, in this configuration, what's happening here is, is I have no chassis ground. So I simply, inside the case here, have my neutral and I have my hot running to the power supply. So that means my ground is now floating. It's not connected to earth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to take my ground probe and I'm going to touch the ground on the power supply and then I'm going to touch the neutral. And then what you can see is I now have 37 volts on my neutral. I shouldn't have any voltage on my neutral. Now I'm going to touch my hotline. Notice I have 82 volts. So I have around 120 volts crossing here. So this shouldn't be. Now I'm going to do a little bit of an overlay on the screen. So why is this the case? Because there is a Y capacitor inside here that connects the neutral to the ground. And in cases where the ground becomes floating, what happens is that that voltage you see, that 37 some volts, is being passed to this case. Now I'm touching this case right now, there's 37 volts on this case, but because of the powder coating in that, you know, nothing's happening. Uh, so this is why it's important to have a good ground. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to de-energize this, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this scenario, and we're going to go back to a proper ground. And again, just for clarity, I'm only using this extension cord for temporary purposes so I can show you the uh, uh, tester and also this little gizmo. So, all right, I've reestablished the ground. I'm going to power this back. Okay, on. so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back and I'm going to put my probe on the ground. And then what I'm going to do is go back here to the neutral. And you notice I basically have, you know, 0 0.2 volts. So, so in essence nothing on the uh, neutral and then if I go back to the load you see I'm running basically my whole 120 volts on this so 
Uh, in other words, the Y capacitor is bleeding off the ground. So if you break that ground, if you have this floating ground, and say, for example, you run it into a power strip such as this, what's going to happen is this machine is going to contribute to, to this ground. So then if you have another machine plugged in here, you now have an electrical connection between those two machines on ground. So that neutral leakage is going to go from this machine to this machine now to top it off to make it even um, a bigger problem is this machine is also going to add to the problem too because it doesn't have a ground. So if we were to take this and remove the ground pin on this and plug machines in here, this they would all start adding to this. And, and this is more than likely why Angus discovered a shock from this. And this is one of the reasons I don't like using power strips um, for multiple printers because what happens is this cord inside can become frayed uh, especially this cheap power strip like this can become damaged inside and you can lose your ground and you don't even know it and then what's going to happen is you plug in a bunch of machines which is also not a good idea but what's going to happen is you're going to make them all electrically common when you plug them into a properly installed gang outlet in your wall or in your shop then what's going to happen is you're going to have less likelihood of losing ground because again what happens is you notice this is a very short cord on this so what what happens many times is people will plug this into an extension cord so you have extra resistance here maybe it's become oxidized over the years you can tell this one's a little bit old uh, and, and so or maybe this pin maybe somebody's broken it off you see that all the time and you lose your ground and then now you have a problem this is why again I don't like the use of power strips for this type of, of application. I think power strips are good for um, you know double insulated things, uh, for short term use things, but I don't think, again, for taking a bunch of printers like this, I also don't like the current draw. Now, the current draw here is not really that huge, uh, but I still don't think it's a good thing. I have seen these things go poof too many times. Um, many times they're you know cheap quality especially these so uh, if you're going to use it get a commercial or industrial one that's going to stand up to the load that's going to have quality connectors on the end I mean these definitely not a you know quality device for that type of application if you want to plug in wall warts that's all great so anyways hopefully I've shared a little bit uh, you know again guys I've kept this a little bit simple don't do this at home this is dangerous. I know what I'm doing. I've worked with power for 30, 40 years. Um, I just want to demonstrate this to you guys, how you know something like this can happen, and also the importance of a ground. You know, a lot of people think, oh, I don't need this third plug. Everything will work, you know, third prong, I should say. Everything's going to work just fine. Well, you're creating a hazardous situation. Also, get one of these. Make sure your home's ground is working good. Make sure your plug ground that you're using in your shop is working well. Because again, you know, you, these are rather small power supplies. You get larger machine tools, and this is one of the reasons I have this. Um, you know, you start dumping more and more current because the piece is that 37 volts, very low current because it's just bleeding across the small capacitor inside this power supply. You know, you get bigger machines, you're going to get bigger bleed, and if you get more machines, that's going to be, you know, so much current from this machine, so much current from the next machine. So if you have a bunch of machines plugged in here, by the time you add it up, you know, when you touch it, you're going to get a poke because even I'm touching this, well, uh, I've got it grounded back again, but, uh, you know, I won't get a poke because it's really not enough current and I'm not grounded very well. But if I am grounded, I'm going to get a poke. So, anyways, swag shop up there, comment below, let me know what you're thinking. We'll see you guys in the next video. Be safe. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.